Gang. Ah. Yes, Dr. Michukaku. I saw him walking home yesterday. He I'm, doesn't want anything to do with me. I'm wearing Colonel Sanders' suit. <laughs> he doesn't recognize you. He doesn't recognize me, and I'm no. fucking in his building. Hi, Dr. Kako. Ah, you're assaulting me. No, I'm saying hi. I've been for fucking five years. I've been saying hi to you. You're assaulting me. You've been on the radio show next to me. Hi. Hi, Dr. Kako. Don't take my money. Hey, social misfit. You've been seeing me on the elevator for four years. (laughs) All right. I thought it was me. I feel better. Jesus Christ. Uh, I say hi to the guy all the time, and he... Not only does he not say hi back, he does start walking faster. Yeah, he's afraid of people. But he's he's this brilliant Very mind, afraid. and he can't recognize somebody. Yeah. He's, Jimmy's right. He sits maybe two feet in front of Jimmy. You've sat Jimmy. next to me in in a social medium outlet. You know what he, he's had for breakfast. You can yeah. smell it on his breath. He's so close. Hi, Dr. Kako. Hello. Uh, open Anthony. Uh, and then fucking ten minutes later in the, in the lobby. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you hitting me with brick? I'm saying hi. So with a brick. He's, I don't understand that either. Uh, I'm so yeah. glad it's not me. I guess oh he's my talking God. about that. Because I tried again yesterday. I see him and his wife on the elevator with the kid, and I hold the door high, and his wife is very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Let's take another elevator. Uh, he gets all scared. He towers out like I'm a fucking monster. What are you he's, doing? He's a nervous guy. He's a panicky Pete who recognizes nobody. Oh, God, that's funny. Uh, and he drinks lactate. Does he? Yeah, we we found that out at Jubilee. But I would never say hi to him in Jubilee. Hi, how are you? Ah, <laughs> on apples! Are you from the apple farm? Are you following me? Let's go cookie people! No, I'm saying hi! <laughs> like I have been for four years! Uh, then you talk about the universe with the guy? Wow, he's all in. Not in person, he's not. So how does gravity form? Oh, heavy things! And he runs down the hall. Sick of him. Uh, I uh, told you that you probably shouldn't look up to a guy like wow. that. Wow. You get what you deserve. Oh. <laughs> That's what you get. He's a social phobe. Phobe. Uh, and yeah. Bat Boy's on Fox News right now. Look up. That's not Bat Boy. Bat Boy. That's not. That's Casey That's Anthony. That's Bat Boy with mascara. I like that she's got um, some uh, tendrils coming down mm-hmm. in front of her ears. And uh, the ponytail's a little nicer today. She doesn't have that real hardened criminal look. That's Amy Fisher's uh, husband right now. No, (laughs) no. George Papard. It's George Anthony, the father. Oh, oh. He looks like... uh, uh, That was too inside. Sorry. Fuck it. Leslie Nielsen. Forget about it. It looks like... Do you deny fingering your daughter's asshole? I do. Wow. He came up with a story yesterday that, uh, yeah, he might have, uh. He might have? Might, no, might have been having a little fun with uh, some associate, some girl that was, uh, look, helping look, one of the search party. But he said, it's ridiculous. No. It's like, well, you went over her house. Mm, went over to her apartment. My granddaughter was missing. I needed cum taken out of my balls. <laughs> What would you do if your granddaughter was missing? Keep all the cum in your balls? No, you get rid of it so you can look better. Because <laughs> you get distracted. You're looking for little shoes, but you can't think of that. You just keep thinking about the cum in your balls until some volunteer drains it into her mouth, cut an asshole, for Pete's sake. What am I, irrational? <laughs> Hello, Dr. Kaku. Oh, hi, hi, oh, hi. Hi, no, hi, how are you? Hi, uh. Very frightened. <laughs> all right, so you've experienced this. I hate him. <laughs> You guys live in the same building. For years. Hi. That's the only reason he started doing our show, because you used to take elevator rides. I would take guy. elevator rides. I said, let's try to get him on. We got him on. Oppie and Anthony. And he, doesn't, Oppie. And he doesn't even know you live in his building. No. Con- I see, I've see. i seen this fuck 50 <laughs> times and said hi to him. No more highs. I'm just going to look at him. Go ahead. Say something about the universe. <laughs> ah. <Go. laughs> I can't. I'm, next time I see him, I'm going to say, "Look, I'm sorry about that problem at the Halderun Collider." Oh, it's fine. Good. Close doors. <laughs> yeah, make a phone call. I'm going to say things that he has to investigate. You believe they found out what the dark matter was? Close doors. Oh, <laughs> cookie people. The light bulb ears. What? <laughs> what are you talking about? You've uh, had it, huh? Had it with him. <laughs> had it, my niceness goes nowhere. I live in the building. Hi, how yes. are you? Oh, hustle the family away. What do you, what do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> oh, is that classic? <laughs> uh, fucking social phobe. He really is. I have Asperger's. 
<laughs> <laughs> Two billion times the square root of 51. I know the answer to that. How are you? Ah, help! Stop assaulting me with friendly gestures. The cookie people are going to get me. If you have, if you look into a fish tank, we're not near a fish tank. I want to know the answer. Just trying to say hello. hello. We live in the same building. We, Can we, get we him on the see phone? each other. Get him on the phone. He's in between TV interviews. What is he talking about these days? The, the wildfires? Wildfire by the uh, what does he know about Los that Alamos shit? nuclear oh, nothing. power plant. Well, it's by the nuke plant. Oh, uh, or the, not the nuke plant. It it's by the nuke uh, Great. Uh, research facility. So, Great. Dr. Cocker, what can you tell us about this, these fires? Well, if two elves rub magic sticks together <laughs> and a fire starts, the universe... No, it won't! <laughs> <laughs> Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Kaku. Ah! <laughs> Get me something to hide behind! <laughs> I'm frightened of your gesture of friendliness. <laughs> I hate salutations! <laughs> oh, oh, man. Oh. When you take the square root of something and you multiply it, by four billion, you get that, and then we have string theory, That's which believes right. that there are little vibrating strings that uh -huh. make everything happen. That's fantastic. And yes, the universe could be bubbles and bubbles upon, but we don't know. Oh, you know, just just for the hell of it, I haven't. Uh, so how are you feeling ah! today? <laughs> ah! Get away! Ah! I'm going for coffee. Would you like ah! what? coffee? No, it will burn. Ah! <laughs> Who are you? I've never seen you before 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> I've never saw you before 50 times. I have never seen you a lot in this building for years. <laughs> I don't recognize anybody. I recognize atoms. <laughs> Not A-D-A-M. A-T-O-M. Who are you? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> He's petrified. I even, I even yelled to him one day, it's Opie from the Opie and Anthony show after he gave me the eye face. Yeah. And, yeah. He still, and, and it made oh, him walk he faster. Care. He doesn't care. He's petrified. Okay, hi, quickly, get to where I'm going. Oh, lactate. He just knows about uh, physics. He has, oh. His head is full of physics, and he has no social skills. None. So, can we get him on the phone? I don't know. We're trying? Phone will ring. He'll, he'll get scared. Yeah. <laughs> ah, numbers, calculations, dash, apostrophe, comma, qu comma, quote, uh, dash, apostrophe, multiply, high. Ah, who are you? <laughs> I've only seen you 50 times. I don't know. Ah! <laughs> They're trying him right now. Listen. If we, uh, no, maybe. Okay. We'll just say hi. Do yeah, if we us? get him on, just just ask personal questions in between the real shit and see how he handles it. Uh, Troy's calling him right now. All right. We'll see. Oh, Life. Troy with the girl pants. Ah. Cool lots. He forgot his socks yesterday, too. Oh, those fucking... Oh, he looks like a, a girl in 1950 in the beach. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking, it's awful. Wearing his pedal pushers. <laughs> exactly. They should be pushing up rose petals. <laughs> pushing dead. Pushing up rose. Petals. Yes, that was Freudian. Yes. Pushing. <laughs> pushing. <laughs> pushing up rose petals. What do you think of Popeye? Ah! What's the matter, Doctor Coxcoo? <laughs> uh, oh shit. Jimmy, that's yeah, that fucking me laugh. funny, man. man. God, God, I really thought laugh. it was just me. No, man. he's. Say hi to him, and he fucking stares at me like I'm holding an axe. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> fucking, fucking Shelly Long was happier to see Nicholson. Or Shelly Duvall. Shelly Duvall. Uh, yeah, whatever. Other. She should have chased uh, Shelly Long. <laughs> Get that fat pig Callie Erste in there. <laughs> Callie Erste. <laughs> I, oh, that's the sign of a tumor in my old head of rule. <laughs> I didn't just say Kirstie Alley. I said Callie Erste. <laughs> Callie Erste. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bertation. Oh, wow. <laughs> you just had a bertation. Oh, that is great. Callie Erste. Speaking of fucking giant hail, I have a tumor <laughs> the size of one fucking destroying my brain. Hi, ah, lumpy brains. Yes. Would you like it's to look like at Callie Erste. Big bosoms. Yeah. What is that? The fat tits. Well, it is whipping my Wednesday. we got to get that going again. What's that Twitter. fat tits? They probably smell like lamb underneath them. Spy Guy 925 <laughs> thank you for the big uh, boobies. Mm -hmm. Am I allowed to retweet that, or are we getting trouble for that? I wouldn't oh, retweet you already, big Fucking tits. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they get upset about. Her arms are up in the air, though. That could yeah, be a like she's going, oh, what the fudge. 
Yeah, it's no big so deal. So why is this taking so long? Oh, he's talking to him right now. I am afraid. And he hung up. No, he, he was having cell phone issues. Troy was literally yelling into the phone. Okay. Oh. Uh, ah, maybe he was yelling <laughs> over his screaming. Yeah. Hi, how are you? Ah, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> so we're going to call him back in five minutes. Weak signal area? Yeah, I think he was in a weak signal area. We, but, uh, yeah, I think he's going to go on. Right should we take a quick break? Yeah, and then we'll have on. Dr. Cocker yeah, to end the show do, today? Let's do that. Hopefully we'll have him on. Because uh, we we got to get to the bottom of this. Yeah, well, how come you don't remember us? Well, our feelings are very hurt. We like you. Very hurt. You want to bring all that up in, instead? Oh, yeah. That's what I want to talk to him about. All right. How perfect. come you don't remember us? You think we're... I feel guilty when I say hi to you because I feel like you don't like us. I uh, don't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't. I've seen you. Imagine if he knows everything about us. Yes, I don't like your Ozzy Osbourne obsession or your mediocre jokes. <laughs> you watch him know everything about... Yes. I liked you better on BAB. <laughs> <laughs> you guys were much better on NEW. What happened? <laughs> yeah. I don't like your choice of quote girls <laughs> as you bring into the elevator. Yes, Twato lost me. All right. Yes, yes. I don't like all the ladies with Adam's apples that follow you through the lobby. All right. <laughs> right, you're right. I forgot. I apologize. <laughs> uh, All right, Kaku, hopefully next. Stay there. Figure it out. Oh, here we go. I think it's... Um... Is this Dr. Michu Kaku? Yes. Dr. How are you, Kaku. Sir? It's been a while. Hi, Dr. Kaku. Did you forget uh, about us? Yeah, I'm right here. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Kaku, we've seen you on the news uh, of late, talking mm -hmm. about the wildfires and... Uh, Perhaps um, the nuclear facility at Los Alamos? Right. Uh, In fact, the fire is uh, three miles away from a major waste, plutonium waste dump at Los Alamos. So uh oh. This now, is a moment of truth now. What are some of the dangers that can be encountered uh, from this fire if it does reach the, uh, the uh, facility? Well, there are up to 30,000 canisters of plutonium waste uh, three miles from the fire. Uh, just sitting above ground, not even protected. Oh, wow. And in protected sites, by the way, sites that are locked down, uh, we have up to six tons of plutonium. This is plutonium from the weapons program. Uh, hopefully mm. no terrorist will sift through the wreckage of a fire and grab some of this plutonium. But six tons worth of uh, plutonium is also stored on site in a secured area. But the unsecured area is what's causing all the worry right now. Mm. It's low-level plutonium waste. Plutonium is the most toxic chemical known to science. A microgram that you can't even see, a particle, in your lungs will cause lung cancer. Wow. So the danger is that a fire will overpressurize the drums, pop them open, and then liquids will boil, and a lot of solid materials will vaporize, so, and it will have a plutonium cloud emerging over Los Alamos. Or not. And then, of course, the winds will whip it up. Winds travel at about 60 miles an hour in that area. Yeah. It's so windy, you're going to blow your hat off or something, right? Uh, and, yeah, that's right. That's the danger, that there could be a plume of plutonium rising from, uh, from Los Alamos, <laughs> sweeping down. Now, the fire department, of course, says everything's under control. Mm. But uh, two years ago, the Department of Energy... Issued so that's a probably the department where they get stuff done fast because it's all energy, right? No, the Department of Energy is... Uh, we all know what that is, Chip. Thank you. Uh, so the, the fire department said, uh, what, sir? <laughs> Why are you going to oh, yeah, fire the, the whole department? What'd they do? Yeah, they criticized the fire department for being uh, not up to speed. Uh, oh, they would be overwhelmed if there was a fire involving sophisticated <laughs> nuclear materials. Now, I would think, what, what, what are they talking, are, is there an evacuation plan? Are there uh, residents around that area? Well, yeah, the residents are out. Uh, the whole town's been evacuated. It's a ghost town now. Uh, only fire crews are allowed on site. <laughs> And remember that uh, fire crews could easily fire. be overwhelmed if the wind changes direction. Oh, absolutely, yes. So what happens if the wind gets all blown and stuff, and if the nuclear stuff's getting blown all over your hat like dangerous or something? I mean, is that bad for the fire department or something? Uh, well, it would be bad for everybody <laughs> if the plutonium dust got in the air because it'd be invisible. It would uh, sweep down like in a plume and get oh. your hair, your nostrils, your clothing, vegetation. It would be a real mess if that happened. But is it something to do with the computers, like war games or something? I was telling people it scandals that. Uh, yeah, but remember that right now uh, the department could be overwhelmed completely if the winds change directions, if the wind whips up more more debris. Uh, the, the fire department, by the way, says there's a canyon. There's a canyon separating oh. the waste dump from the fire. But, you know, ashes, embers could very easily... Burning embers was my band. Yeah, they they could uh, they could actually uh, hold on to some of this nuclear material and carry it uh, pretty far, I would gather. 
Right. So we have to be very careful about this. And like I said before, we also have secured sites with some of them underground, some of them above ground in Mm -hmm. sealed buildings. But these buildings have never been tested against a major fire. So it's a science project as to whether or not we can contain six tons of plutonium fuel uh, that could be used as bad as seven tons. What type of uh, what type of radius uh, uh, area Steel of um, of uh, what type of area of of uh, toxicity are we looking at huh? here? Uh, well, if you take a look at uh, Chernobyl and Fukushima, most of the radiation was concentrated within about ten to fifteen miles. The dead zone around Chernobyl is around nineteen miles. Mm. Uh, the, the the dead zone around Fukushima will be approximately that same radius, about nineteen miles. Mm-hmm. And in that area, it's a ghost town. Uh, no one's allowed there. Right. Uh, you know, there's no economic activity. No one lives there. It's, it's off basically off limits for you know several centuries. So the whole town is probably like right. Nobody be going to the movies or nothing there. It's just something like that, right? <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, remember, the Los Alamos is the crown jewel of our nuclear weapons program, and it could become a ghost town if, and this is a big if, if plutonium leaks out of those canisters. Yes. Now, now uh, Los Alamos, uh, that is still an operational facility. Oh, sure. That's yeah, right. they, of course it is. Yeah. They maintain our nuclear arsenal. Uh, that's where the atomic bomb was built. Uh, underground testing took place. Uh, in fact, the fires are now raging right over the area where we used to do underground nuclear tests. Uh, mm. in, in New Mexico. Wow. And uh, we still regularly, regularly uh, mini- uh, handle plutonium there on site. That's what the Is it heavy? Is. Wow. Do you carry it? How do you get it from around? I thought it was supposed to be bad or something. Uh, well, first of all, plutonium in metallic form is very heavy, but it's very small. How much is it, like 50 pounds or something? Well, the, the basic well. components of the Nagasaki bomb would be about the size of a softball. Right, uh, right, right. The actual plutonium itself is rather compact and rather small, but there's hundreds of bombs worth of fuel on site. Six uh. tons. It only takes about 20 pounds to create an atomic bomb. So the so bomb... Quite a, yeah. The, the, the bomb that got dropped over um, Nagasaki is the, the, was only the Nagasaki. size of a softball was the plutonium? Uh, that's right. The actual plutonium itself is uh, a little bit bigger than a softball. In fact, one of my acquaintances, uh, oh, Professor uh, name? Philip Morris at MIT, actually loaded the Nagasaki bomb with his bare hands. Oh, really? He had the hemisphere in his Don't hands. shake his hands. It with his bare hands. <laughs> and I, I once asked him, how do you load a Nagasaki bomb? Yeah. And he said, very carefully. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I don't get it. That's the actual way to do it. His nickname was Stumpy. <laughs> very <laughs> carefully. Now, uh, uh, for the for the layman here, uh, Dr. Kaku, there is not any um, chance of a an actual nuclear explosion from this. No, no. No. Uh, first of all, to create a nuclear detonation, you have to have a trigger. And the trigger is a very precise set of explosives which right. explode the plutonium. So even Iran, for example, even if Iran and, and uh, uh, Korea, North Korea, they have, would, would have problems compressing the plutonium. Fuel. Yes, it, it is uh, made into what they call a critical mass. What? That's through uh, in church, right? Using either shaped charges... Or uh, some type of a uh, actually cards? a cannon system, I believe, was used oh, in one of the first uh, atomic better. bombs. <laughs> that's right. Nick Cannon's the, good. The Hiroshima bomb used the gun principle. Or the Hiroshima. The yes. Uh, Everywhere. Uh, think of Pac-Man, a pie-shaped thing with a with a slice coming out. That's Pac-Man. So think of Pac-Man made out of uranium. Right. One, one pie piece. Oh, pac Into the other Pac-Man piece. Right. Yeah. I was never bomb. any good at that game. I used to never get past the third board or something. And that, and that would make uh, uh, the uh, the critical mass. Uh, what the critical what? mass is about the size of your fist. Right. Oh wow, that's pretty cool. I got a good. I, I like to box. What would limit the size of an atomic explosion? Uh, let's say you could come up with. Um, um, nuclear weapons grade fuel the size of let's say a beach ball yeah, well, would you be able to beach beach use that and in and and have a uh, an explosion to to turn that into uh, its own cr- critical mass and and have a gigantic nuclear what? nuclear explosion so big that it knocked everybody the sun off of something yeah 
Yeah, one of my colleagues was Ted Taylor, and he actually designed that bomb you're talking about. <laughs> oh, really? Yes. I remember working <laughs> closely together. <laughs> yes. It was, designed by, it was designed by Ted Taylor. My, my oh, friend, Ted Taylor, yeah, of course, Ted. Yeah. Is that his real yeah. name? Yes. It sounds like a fake name. Is it Tetley Taylor? Ted Taylor. Oh. And what, uh, what, what difficulties are there in something that large? What would be different than using something the size of a softball? How much does it weigh if you got to pick up, like, 50 pounds of it? Don't listen to him. Uh, I want to fly heavy, right? Well, I, I, I actually want to know what the me too. the, the uh, difficulties would be in a bomb sure. that big. Yeah, would you like be able to throw uh, it at people yeah, or something? There are difficulties uh, engineering something that big. That's why we go to hydrogen bombs. Uh, that's why right. we yeah, sure. transition to hydrogen. Sure. Hydrogen bombs could also be roughly the same size, and they would yield a thousand times more energy. Oh, than right. Atomic bombs. Now, do oh. uh, don't don't hydrogen bombs use atomic uh, explosives as some type of uh, primer or, or is trigger? that just a big rumor? That's right. A hydrogen bomb uses lithium deuteride. Lithium deuteride is uh, something you deuteride can find from a chemistry store. Uh, but lithium deuteride in concentrated <laughs> form is the basic fuel of a hydrogen bomb. Right. And you use the atomic bomb as a fuse. As a fuse, it's wow. a good network. hydrogen bomb. That is something. And, sure. and now all these materials uh, reside at Los Alamos, and uh, there's a fire... Uh, sweeping maybe towards this area. Yeah, the heck of a uh, broom. <laughs> what uh, what what precautions are they taking besides just getting um, uh, fire crews out there? Are they doing anything at the plant to try to uh, protect these, especially the exposed fuel? Is there hay around it? Well, the the basic failsafe uh, is to use foam uh, to get fire trucks oh, to, to make foam and spray oh, foam on top of these canisters, and that's it. Right, that's it. Uh, that's it. We just try to keep home. them as as cool as possible. Um, yeah, these are your tax dollars at work. Yeah, the now, fire is a fact. If, if the wind if the wind changes direction, yeah, fire engulfs oh. this area. Uh, it's all over. See, I mean, the fire is hot. Wow. How I got worried, burned one time when I was a kid. The air. How worried something. are you, sir? Uh, well, right now, the, the winds are dying down at the present time. Perfect. Right now. Yeah. It's not yeah. as windy. However, right. the winds are unpredictable. Sure. That's the key. Yeah. They are unpredictable. Sure. And we have a three-mile barrier between uh, the fire and the actual site. Itself. Four no. miles would be better, right? Rock. Aren't there, uh, aren't, Dr. Cago, aren't there certain chemicals besides foam that could encase, uh, you know how they spray beams with um, uh, flame retardant uh, uh, material hey, nice. to keep uh, metal from melting during a high-rise fire? Couldn't they spray these canisters and maybe have a little more time if a fire does sweep through? Yeah, like maybe throw mattresses well, uh, on them or something? Everything but the kitchen sink at this canister. <laughs> right. I, mean, I know, like it's Reginald Denny or something. Department. But remember, it's just the local fire department. Uh, we're not talking about the United States military coming in. To now, now if, if, if it is something that big, uh, why wouldn't they have the National Guard come in? And, uh, He's maybe, only one guy. That's why it's too much work for one person, may, probably. <laughs> maybe start uh, taking some precautions before something happens. Like cookie people. Well, that's what I would suggest. But yeah. Right now, uh, yeah, I think they want to. They don't want to create panic, and so I think that's why they're downplaying the danger and right. the things that could right. happen. Right. Uh, but you know, just last year, another report came out saying that there's lack of safety. I hate doing reports. In case of a fire. Yeah. Of it happened. And then, as I mentioned two years ago, they said that the local fire department would be overwhelmed in case of a major fire. And that's kind of what's happening. Reports are coming true. And that's what's, what we're looking at. They wow. said you have to mention your book, too. It's like Physics of the Future. Yes. And, and it was a Nye, best, a Nye Times bestseller. That's New York Times New York bestseller. Times bestseller. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was any Times bestseller. Like it was a bestseller at any time. Physics, physics the of the Future. Uh, yeah, Physics of the Future by Dr. Kaku. This, this book has really taken off. A lot of people uh, really I know it. are, are uh, really enjoying it. Yes. This. Um, you 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 take physics and really do make it um, entertaining for the layman, make it understandable, sure. and uh, and kind of incorporate things from entertainment and whatnot, and uh, uh, our basic questions that we have about physics, and and yeah, you do a great job. Well, let me. Do, do you address do you address stuff practical. like? Um, mm -hmm. It's very practical in the sense that physics will change our life. Uh, the book He's better at ignoring shit than I am. Yeah. Uh, the yep. book takes yep. you to the year 2100, but even 10 years from yeah. now, the <laughs> Internet, for example, will be in our contact lens. Yep, yep. So we will blink. So we will go yeah, online. but you probably need a <laughs> <laughs>
And your contact lens will identify dry. people's faces, so you'll right. know always who you're talking to. No more, uh, no more uh, awkward moments of saying, "Oh, who is yeah. that person?" I, just I had contacts, right. but there was no. My prescription was changing. So, what would happen if you had like internet contacts and your prescription was no good or something? Wow. Uh, well, you might have a problem there. However, uh, put dry stuff on them, right? At a cocktail party, you will always know who to suck up to at a cocktail party. Right, exactly. <laughs> What's that? I never um, got invited to one. Dr. Kaku. Dr. Kaku, I got a question for you. Yeah, Opie has uh, something to ask you, when, sir. When you're, not, when you're not doing physics, what do you like to do? Uh, well, realize that physics is everywhere. So I, I basically apply it. Apply it to the future. Apply it to our daily life. Sure, like yeah. an application of something. Uh, you know, everywhere you move, there's physics, right? Yeah, um, Jim Norton has just entered the studio, and uh, I gotta tell you, sir, me and Jim Norton live very close to you. Very close. We don't want to uh -huh. give away your location, but we're pretty much your neighbors. And, uh, uh -huh. I, I've noticed that I've yelled, uh, hi to you a couple times, and, um, you don't, you don't say hi back, and I think maybe <laughs> we, there, there might be a problem or something. You're not mad at us, are you? You're not mad at us, are you? Us, are you? Huh? Either that or else I'm nearsighted and missed you. <laughs> oh, okay. See, it could just be his, uh, his glasses. Next, next time you hear someone yell, hey, Dr. Kaku, Opie from the Opie and Anthony show, that's me. Oh, and I just okay. want to say hi because I know you are you live in the neighborhood. Uh-huh. Okay, I will. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, Dr. Yeah. Kaku, uh, thank Jimmy, you so well, much. For, Jimmy, you oh, have anything oh, to add oh, to oh, this? Jimmy, Jimmy's anything? back in the studio. Yeah, one time I was on the elevator and, and uh, I was like, it's a good job. It's got its ups and downs. <laughs> Dr. Kaku, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, we were very curious about this uh, Los Alamos uh, nuclear yeah. uh, Good facility thing they found the Alamos. fire. They lost and, it. No, and uh, uh, you're our go-to guy as far as physics go. And uh, good yeah. luck with the book. And we'll talk to you again soon. Don't need to call okay, him a goat. Thank you, thank you Dr. Right. Kaku. Wait one second. You, Kaku. How much does the Earth weigh? Six sextillion tons. Thank you. That's a lot. I guessed five. Everybody told me I was crazy. What's a sextillion? Is that like a tillion that looks really good? Oh, God. Thank you, Dr. Kaku. Thank Kondo. you, Dr. Kaku. How I'm much does the sun weigh in, in kilograms? All right, all right. All right. Let, let the good doctor go. He's got TV interviews to do, sir. Oh, my God. Thank you, sir. There he goes. I have never been so embarrassed <laughs> with anyone on the phone in my life. <laughs> Those are... When, what, wait, what was my favorite? The one, Hiroshima. Hiroshima, was Hiroshima, 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 Hiroshima. Hiroshima, Hiroshima, everywhere. Hiroshima, Hiroshima. <laughs> you asshole! Oh, that had me fucking on the edge. You flipped that because that I wasn't had to the reason. Bite my tongue. That wasn't the reason we were gonna have him no. on the phone. But man, oh that god one. damn! We have line of the day. You do that Whew. at the ten o'clock hour, Sam. Because okay. we gotta play a flock of beats before we get out of here. Oh, that's a good band. <laughs> Chip is really not a good interviewer. Uh, right? No, or Chip is an, a, a horrible <laughs> interviewer. He just interrupts. <laughs> he's he, dumping all questions. He did do a great job of just focusing and <laughs> concentrating. And he's oblivious to Chip, like yeah. myself. I like that. It's like, <laughs> so <laughs> next time, say hi. And he's like, ah. Yeah. Hi. yeah. Ah. People are so annoyed on Twitter. <laughs> Fucking Chip, shut the fuck up. <laughs> Jim, I am feeling so uncomfortable right now with your call with Kaku. Yeah, that's what a lot of people are saying over here. Too. They're like, oh my God, I can't even listen to this. <laughs> Chip is, it got me so embarrassed for myself. <laughs> Jim Norton, Chip, shut the fuck up or something. Says, <laughs> shut the fuck up or something. <laughs> Uh, Jim Norton, shut up. I was so happy. Right, was, I annoyed them. That was terrific. Uh, yeah. I, I saw I was trying to do a real interview, so I was like, well, you know. No, no. no that's, 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 that's what that works. That was, that was the whole gag. Yeah, yeah. Were good questions. So. That was the whole gag, just like <laughs> do an interview with a dumb fucking chip is saying, Hiroshima, there is Shima. Everywhere. Hiroshima, Hiroshima, Hiroshima. Hiroshima. It's a fucking scientist on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> How did that kill me? <laughs> God, that's that great. was perfect. We got the info out in a very unusual way.